Well, Kyle and I told you our thoughts on The Woman in Black, and now joining me now is Lee, who's going to tell us her thoughts on this production that's got everybody talking at the moment amongst Melbourne theatre circles. Lee, what did you think of The Woman in Black? Well, obviously this is a horror, and um, what stood out to me was how the audience was reacting, especially in the second half of the performance. Um, There was a lot of... um, squealing at times and gasps of you know sucking in that breath with um surprise and um and fear i think for a lot of people now i am into horror so i actually wasn't as scared as a lot of the people in the audience um but i have to say the actual performing the the acting was absolutely superb um what I was really intrigued about and in awe of was the amount of dialogue and lines that they had to use. Um, I cannot understand how someone can actually remember that much content. Yeah, I saw um, Death of a Salesman last year with Anthony Lepaglia and it was the same. He was on stage for three hours in a completely dialogue-driven production and he remembered every single word. And, of course, the actors we're talking about here are John Waters and Daniel McPherson as well, for anyone that's just joined us. Yeah, that's right. And um, what I loved, too, was the way that the cast used um, the props in different ways. So, you know, a, a, um, a, like a basket, a big basket could transform into, say, a horse and carriage. Um, and... Of course, there was no actual horse there and there was no carriage, but the way that the actors used their body to make you feel like you were watching them sitting on a cart, that bouncing around as if the horses were leading them and um, and they were bouncing up and down in their carriage was just unbelievable because it made the audience use their imagination and in your mind you could picture what wasn't actually there in front of you. Um, another example of that was that um, there was a dog that they were patting or talking to or motioning um, that the dog had, you know, run further away or come back to them. Um, now, there was no actual dog on stage. There was no representation of a dog. There was no stuffed toy. Um, <clears throat> but the way the actors um, used their bodies, you know, their fingers to pretend to pat them or or to call them um, made you feel like there was a dog there. So in my mind, I pictured a certain type of dog um, that they had because, you know, they'd pat quite close to the ground. So I pictured a smaller dog. Um, but the way that they acted made you believe that things were there that weren't. Yep. Um, and so I just felt that felt like that was such a creative way of acting um and of course it's been written like that um and so i thought the writing was fantastic in that sense um but there was a lot of intrigue as well in the storyline and also i did find myself trying to figure out at times you know what is going on here what's happening um now i did find the first half a bit dry i have to say um As did the people next to me at intermission. They were talking to me. Now, I don't know these people, but um, not sure if that's because we were sitting so far back, like we were really far back. Um, But maybe, I I don't know if it just didn't capture us as much in the first half. Um, I, I think it was very different to what people were expecting because if you'd seen the Daniel Radcliffe and movie Kyle kind of touched on this before you weren't expecting comedy it's yeah, quite there a was some, um... it's quite of a it's quite a dark movie and I know even for myself when John Waters first started with that dialogue at the start and it was comedic I was like hang on a minute is I almost thought like is this another warning for us here in the theater like another phone kind of warning like turn your mobile phones off um yeah I think that kind of caught a lot of people off guard because of course the the story with daniel radcliffe is basically the story that the old arthur kipps is telling so you don't see any of that side of it in the film 
Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so maybe it's just because we weren't expecting it to be as it was. Um, but almost instantly I was in awe of the acting level and the, as I said to you earlier, the amount of lines they had to learn. Um, I thought the, um, the props were fantastic. I loved the way that, um, it was designed to, it was kind of tilted. Yeah. Um, the floor was tilted, which made it actually easier for us up the back, um, on the floor area to see what was happening because they were kind of up on a bit of a higher level. Um, I think that's actually why they did it because so much of it is on the ground in the production. So, yeah. But I did have, I did actually feel sorry for their legs standing in an angle um, for quite some time. Um, but yes, I, I really thought the second half was um, quite amazing and became more intriguing as time went by. Um, and yeah, I, I, I love the way that they did it. I love the way that um, the woman in black entered the scene. I won't say why yeah um and yeah i i would recommend seeing it um but just know that it is a lot more dialogue driven than say prop driven yep so what did you think of the performances of uh john waters and daniel mcpherson outstanding absolutely outstanding um as i said they use their body to their bodies um to really show the audience what they were meant to be thinking. Um, And of course, you know, the lines that they delivered was delivered with authority and um, passion and um, expression and it really drew you in. Um, Yeah, because of the way they delivered that. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So um, that is... Lee's thoughts on The Woman in Black, which is on at the Athenaeum Theatre right now. Go and book your tickets right now.